This book is absolute garbage. I read the entire thing, and it claims that you can use the power of your mind to control your genes and then pray cancer away. And its author has a YouTube channel. Welcome to Debunk the Funk, where today we'll be taking a look at Dr. Bruce Lipton, a former scientist turned spiritual teacher who lies about basic biological principles so that you believe him and buy his magic chakra crystal butterfly CDs from his website. I'm Dr. Wilson, your favorite structural and molecular biologist. Let's jump into this crazy train. There are cells, that the cells are the building block of everything. And then the question is, well, if the cells are creating life, then what controls the cells? Well, in 1953, the world was introduced to the concept of the DNA double helix. If at this point you're already cringing inside because you think he might say that DNA doesn't control our cells, just wait. I go, so what happened? I said, well, five years later, after 1953, 1958, Francis Crick, one of the so-called co-founders of the DNA story, comes up with something called the central dogma. He said, information in biology goes only in one direction. It starts with the DNA and then goes to the RNA, which is a Xerox copy of the gene. And then that goes to protein. Yeah, that's pretty much what happens in cells. DNA holds information for genes, and in order for genes to be activated so that they can actually do something, the DNA first has to be read so that copies of it can be made in the form of RNA. Think of this as making a photocopy of an original. Once that photocopy gets made in the form of RNA, that RNA is sent off to a cellular factory where the information in the RNA is read again so that proteins can be made. Those are the basics of gene expression or how a gene gets activated so that it can make protein. This is something that's been studied for decades by tens of thousands of molecular biologists from all over the world. So keep that in mind as we listen to Bruce Lipton slip closer and closer into the dangerous Gwyneth Paltrow zone. Well, who are we? What is a human in this little scheme right here? And I go, ah, a human is the protein. I don't really know what he means by this. Humans need all three of those things to work together in order to, well, be a human. Then I say, can the protein, the human body, go back and change the DNA? And the answer is no. It's unidirectional the other way. And I say, so why is that relevant? It says we have no control over our genes. Our genes control us. We don't control them. Let's get one thing clear. You cannot change the sequence of the genetic code that you are born with at least not intentionally. That genetic code is set. However, what you can do is control the expression of certain genes. For example, if I go running right now, I'm going to activate a different set of genes than I have active right now just sitting here. That's because cells in your body depend on environmental cues to know which genes they need to activate at which time. That's pretty much the extent of the control you have over your genes and their expression. What Bruce Lipton is going to now say is far, far beyond that. And it's called the central dogma. It's very interesting to me because uh, I was teaching this in medical school for a while. And then at one point when I left the system, I said, I never looked up the word. What is the actual meaning of dogma? And when I read it, it's like, oh my God, because dogma is a belief based on religious persuasion and not scientific fact. And all of a sudden I go, oh my God, the central dogma is religion. I go, yes, I was teaching religion about genetics in medical school because it was never a valid understanding. <sighs> no, no, Bruce, it's just a name. Central dogma is just a name. It doesn't mean it's a literal belief. It was a hypothesis that Francis Crick offered. And I go, what was the relevance? Well, once it was published, everyone goes and goes, yeah, that seems right to me. Does it seem right to you? Yeah, it seems right to me. Everybody seems, oh, let's vote. How many believe in this? And everybody put their hands up, and then the hypothesis became truth. That's not how science works, Bruce, and that's not what happened. Surely he must know that this was tested and people didn't just accept it. It was published in 58. It was in the books in 68. It's in the textbooks in 78, 88, 98, 2008, whatever. It's still there. I go, why is it relevant? It was never scientifically validated. I mean, he said he taught this in medical school, right? So he has to know that 
Transcription, the process of turning DNA into RNA, we know what does that. We know that it's done by something called an RNA polymerase and a whole complex of proteins. And that translation, turning RNA into protein, is carried out by the ribosome, which I actually study. He has to know this, right? The dogma is a hypothesis. Now I'm going to tell you the simple truth. It is totally wrong. I go, why? Because it says you're a victim. But as we're going to go into, you're not a victim. You're a master. So the idea that genes control life, which you've heard <laughs> ever since growing up, turns out to be a false misperception. It's not totally wrong. It's gene expression. It's how life works. And although we found a few exceptions to the central dogma, there are only three very specific ones. I'll put links to those in the description, along with all other information that you might want to check out. So this is the lie that Bruce Lipton is telling you so that he can convince you that you somehow have power over your genes, and he's going to teach you how to control them if you buy the rest of his content. Well, luckily for you, you don't have to buy his content because I've tortured myself with his book, and we're going to take a look at just how crazy it gets. Towards the end of his book, he talks about this doctor named Leonard Laskow, who claims to have healed cancer patients by praying it away. I'll paraphrase what he says. Basically, Laskow is at this retreat where his roommate has late-stage metastatic cancer. Laskow puts his hands on him and visualizes a radiant ball of light. And then 11 years later, he meets the same guy again, and he had a spontaneous remission. He was cancer-free. Bruce Lipton then claims that there was clearly a relationship between his meeting with Laskow and him becoming cancer-free. Just because. So, cool story, bro, but does he have any real evidence? Well, Bruce Lipton says that Laskow went on to do experiments that proved the same thing. Lipton then goes on to explain how Laskow experimented with this by growing cancer cells in a petri dish, holding the petri dish, and then basically meditating on it. And this is what he has to say. Laskow experimented with several different emotional intentions while holding the cells, all of which sought to activate the natural force of coherence in the universe. The most effective intention, the one that caused cancer cells to diminish their growth by 39%, was return to the natural order and harmony of the normal cell line. When Laskow added visual imagery to the intention, the healing effect doubled. I actually found this study, and it turns out that it's not peer-reviewed, it's never been published, and it's just posted on Laskow's website where it doesn't even list the results. They just say that there were effects. It's not science. And yet, Bruce Lipton will have you believe that this is science, and that you can control your genes somehow with your mind in order to cure everything from cancer, AIDS, and autism. Yeah, his book goes there. Beliefs can't change your DNA, but believing that you can cure cancer with your mind is harmful. Cancer sucks. And while there is something to be said about having a positive attitude while going through treatment, cancer patients don't deserve to be lied to. What Bruce is teaching is dangerous, and you shouldn't take it at face value. You should fact check him. Always fact check people. Even me. That's why I have all the links to all my sources in the description. Well, I think that's going to do it for this week's episode of Debunk the Funk. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe so that you can join me next week where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.